All right. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the weekly conference call here. Matt Ham, uh, working with Red Earth uh, Marketing. We've got our team on the live call here from all over. We've got folks, uh, our PA folks on today. We've got some folks down in Alabama. Uh, so thank you all for jumping on and for joining us. Uh, this is also going on our YouTube channel as well for anybody who wants to find uh, this content or be able to go back and search it. Know that you've got an archive of resources there. I think I looked the other day. It's kind of crazy. It's like we have a year's worth of stuff because we've been doing this every week now for a year. And so that was pretty cool. So it's been uh, an awesome uh, experience for me to, to dump, jump into this environment and uh, really appreciate you guys making time. And certainly John does as well. Um, today, I want to talk about <clears throat> the power of focus. So we're going to kind of jump right into uh, the content today, jump right into this thought process. And again, as we talk about this, you know, I, I don't want this to be Matt's talking head for an extended period of time. I'm really trying to provide and want to provide very powerful and specific ideas and practices that help bring a more excellent um, kind of operation to the team at large. So some of this applies to your personal life. Uh, some of it uh, applies to the sales side of what you do, uh, relational. So it's kind of all the above, but it's on you guys to dive into it, to dig into it, and to see you know where it hits you and how it begins to roll out in your own life. But today I've been thinking about the power of focus. Um, quick backstory, I was in sales for, gosh, it's hard to believe, like 20 years of my life and was very successful in it. I sold real estate much like you guys do at Amenitized Communities. Uh, also sold insurance. Um, I was in a variety of different sales environments in, uh, in in college as well. And I even remember when I first started understanding what sales was, I was actually waiting tables at a high-end steakhouse and they were teaching us how to upsell wine and how to upsell, uh, you know, cuts of beef and stuff like that. And so that was very intriguing for me when I was, you know, 18 years old and began to develop that into all of the variety of sales that I've done over the years. But the number one thing that I struggled with as a salesperson, I'll never forget, I had finished like third in our company out of 800 and some agents. We were selling insurance at the time. And I loved insurance sales. I loved connecting with clients. And you guys know how it is. There's a scoreboard. There's a, you know, it's all competitive and everybody's out there doing it. And so we were selling and I finished third in the company. And after that year, uh, I began to... Uh, have this feeling of like, okay, I've done that. So I need to go do something else. And also too, not to mention the thousand families and clients that I had um, needed continual service and support. And, and so I ended up that year deciding I was going to write a book. I started a corporate speaking career. And so I was doing a lot of things. Well, my sales fell a, a good bit. And I remember I finished, uh, I don't know, I was probably like 70th out of 800 in the company. <laughs> and I got in trouble because the director of sales for the whole organization came in and he said, you're not a top 70 guy. You're a top three guy. And it was just interesting because I got really upset. I was like, man, I'm in the top 10% of all agents. And just because I set the bar back where I did, now you're giving me a hard time. And, and so I was taking it very personal and getting offended and all that kind of stuff in my immaturity. But what he said was an incredibly empowering statement for me. He said, Matt, you suffer from diffusion. And it's, it's in interesting because um, I'm, I'm sitting here doing a word search as we're preparing for our call today. The difference between diffusion, diluted, and delusion. So I'm going to trip you guys out with these words, diffusion, uh, diluted, and delusion. And I think they all have a very important tie-in to, to how we operate in our, in our daily lives. So the definition of diffusion is to spread something widely about, right? It is diffused, like a diffuser does the essential oils. It diffuses the oil into the room, into the atmosphere. And what he was saying to me is that, Matt, you are diffused, meaning you spend your time and energy in a lot of different areas and in a lot of different ways. 
you know, you're you're a good salesperson over here, but you're also a dad to four kids and you're racing triathlons and you're writing books and you're, you know, speaking and you're diffused. So all of those areas are not getting the best of you. They're getting a small portion of you. They're not getting the concentrated version of you. They're getting the diffused version of you. And I was like, okay, well, that, that's interesting. Now, for me personally, that time of my life, that's actually what I needed. But I don't think that it's always healthy. And so I'm going to talk through that and how it relates to you guys in your career in sales. And the question would be is, are you diffused? How are you diffused and are you diffused well among the many different um, responsibilities that you guys have? The second word is delusion. Like, excuse me, not delusion, diluted. If you're going to dilute something, okay, um, you're going to add water to it. So if it's a concentrated substance like lemon juice, okay, you dilute the lemon juice by pouring water into it, and that's how you make lemonade. Um, essentially, the concentration is weakened by adding something into it. And I think there's a great challenge with salespeople is that, listen, everybody on this call, guess what? You are a salesperson. Your job, your role, your responsibility within this organization is to sell property, to sell homes, to sell townhomes, to sell lots. That's the main goal. But along with that responsibility comes other things that are required of you. When you sell things, right, you have paperwork, you have contracts, you have follow-up, you have meetings, uh, you have all of these different types of responsibilities that come in. And the challenge is when you add in all the external stuff, it dilutes your salesmanship. And so you have a lot of salespeople who are diluted. It means they've, they've added so much stuff into the mix that they're not actually spending their time on sales. And again, with the word diffusion, it's they're diffused across a, a wide area. They've got a wide swath of things that they're required to do. So ultimately what happens is they don't do really anything well. They do a lot of things okay or mediocre. And, and that's a, it's a real problem. And so again, I'm not saying we don't have responsibilities. I'm not saying that we don't need to manage those. But when it comes to your time and your schedule and your calendar, you have to protect the essential concentration of why you were hired, and that is to sell property. You cannot diffuse that across your week. And so uh, kind of driving further down into this, the, the third word that uh, brought to my attention as I was working through this is delusion, D-E-L-U-S-I-O-N. Um, you know, you tell somebody you're delusional. It means you believe things that aren't actually true, right? You're delusional. So here's kind of my, my, my play on words and my challenge to you guys is if you are a salesperson who is diffused across a lot of space and a lot of different things, if you have diluted your salesmanship with all of the different responsibilities, ultimately, when you call yourself a salesperson, you are delusional. <laughs> You're delusional because you actually have to spend your time selling property. You've got to spend your focused time and concentrated energy on selling things. And so all of this is kind of lighthearted. I'm, I'm intending to make a play on the word um, of, of diffusion, diluted, and delusional. And, and I think it's with great purpose, though, because so many salespeople call themselves salespeople, but they don't spend the majority of their time selling things. Now, you're not going to sell things 40 hours a week. And that's certainly not what I am suggesting. But think of it this way. If you have light, sunlight, okay, we know this, sunlight heats a space. But if you put a microscope on the sunlight, and maybe I just did this because I'm like a boy, when I was a little kid, you could harness the sunlight through a microscope, laser focus it, concentrate it, and you could actually burn leaves. I remember sitting in my mom's driveway having a pile of pine straw and using a microscope and setting this pine straw on fire. And I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. All that is, is a, an example of the power of concentration, the power of focus. The same thing is true of water. 
I remember my dad one time had gotten a pressure washer and he was pressure washing our backyard and he was doing it barefoot and he turned up the nozzle too, too concentrated and he actually cut his foot with the water. When the water and the pressure is concentrated enough, it actually can cut through the concrete that you're cleaning. But when it's diffused out, it just washes away all the dirt and grime. And so you have to think about your life and your salesmanship in a similar way. And so now let's bring this idea of uh, focus and, and not being diluted or diffused and, and therefore delusional. Let's bring that down into your days, your week, and your specific property. The question is, is what are you focused on with the majority of your time? If you take a snapshot of your week, let's say you are supposed to, you know, for, for most part, come in around 9 a.m. and you work until 5 with some time for lunch. That's a general work environment, work week, work day, excuse me, for everyone. Now, I know you guys being in real estate, it's very different. There's some after hours things. There's evening phone calls. There's some weekend duties or whatnot. But just take a day and say, how am I spending the majority of my time? And this is an intentional practice for you to get a hold of your schedule and your calendar. I've showed you guys this before, and I'll show you again today. See if I can find it here. This is my, I actually map out like a calendar on paper and I kind of write out objectives, goals, what's kind of going on this week. And I know pretty much this week and next week where my openings are. And I have to build into that intentional time for the growth aspect of our business right? If I'm not spending time on the growth or the sales side of our business, the business doesn't thrive. And so my challenge to you guys is how are you building specific time into your schedule to remember that you are a sales person? You have to be a salesperson. And if you're not careful, what you end up being, right, is an errand boy or an errand girl for builders, for clients, and all the other things. Now, yes, there is a requirement to uh, do some of those things. You, you need to serve your clients, right? You need to help out your uh, peers, your coworkers, etc. But you have to be very intentional about protecting your schedule to allow specific time to focus on sales, right? Um, <coughs> excuse me. And so I'm going to ask you, what do you do to focus on sales? This is hypothetical. You don't have to answer it on the phone right now. But do you have a dedicated time each day to outbound phone calls? Do you have a dedicated time each day, each day to work on your sales process? Uh, it's interesting. I was talking with a salesperson. I do some one-to-one -one coaching as well through our organization. And I was talking with a salesperson the other day. And, you know, she is relatively new to the business. And I asked her, I said, how was your week? She said, I had six appointments. And I said, cool. How did they go? She walked through them all. She said, I didn't sell anything. And I said, okay, how much of your time last week did you spend on practicing your sales presentation before you actually met with the customer? She said, I didn't. I said, okay, how much of your time did you spend after you met with the client going back through the conversation and asking yourself, what could have gotten better? Where could I have used a different word? How could I have guided my uh, conversation, my language? What words could I have used differently? Could I have had different inflection in my voice? Could I have introduced something at a different time that would have been beneficial? She said, I didn't do that. And I said, okay. You know, last week, if you were on the call, we talked about Tom Brady just because it was timely with the Super Bowl. And I'm not speaking about Tom Brady specifically, but one of the things that professional athletes do better than anyone else is they practice, they play the game, and they review film. You know, I know that golfers and baseball players and basketball, all of these guys, they review film of themselves during the game 
and get very granular about being more excellent and how they could have executed differently. The interesting thing is that salespeople call themselves a sales professional, but they don't actually treat themselves like a professional, meaning there's very little practice and generally there's very little review of their appointments and their, their schedule and kind of their processes. And so today, my, my real challenge for you guys is to consider this concept of focus and to press on you and say, where and how are you focusing your time each and every week, each and every day? And are you protecting your schedule to focus in on sales? More importantly, how are you focusing on sales? Are you spending time practicing your front end? Like, here's an example. You guys are all in different communities, so I can't speak one generic thing out, but every single community has properties for sale. And so find a property that you are ridiculously familiar with. You know it like the back of your hand. Maybe it's an empty lot and you understand the topography. You understand the setbacks as to where the back porch is going to be. So you can actually walk a prospective buyer to the back porch and paint a picture in their mind that, hey, can you imagine your back deck here? You can put a covered awning over it. The sun's going to be setting right behind the home. And this could be the place where you could have your Tuesday night dinner parties that you told me about. You know, do you guys do this? Do you know these properties well enough to understand the dynamics, to have tools in your belt when you're working with clients, to be able to sell them property, to paint pictures, to create energy and emotion, or are you just pretending to be a sales professional and that you just are at the front door with the tag on that says you're in sales and you walk them through homes and you take orders from them. So think about this. And I'm pressing on you guys a little bit to step into your profession, to become more excellent. You know, what separates excellent salespeople from people who are good salespeople? They just take orders and they just are good conversationalists. They're good, um, you know, at follow up is excellent salespeople have a dynamic focus on their profession and they've gotten really, really good at it. And they can paint pictures and tell stories and create emotion and invite people into an experience like no one else can. And that's because they spent time practicing. They spent time actually executing and then reviewing their execution and getting better at it. So the final thing that I will um, say with this is, this concept of focus, I would challenge each one of you to find a specific property that you can focus on, like make it your baby, like lot 289 is, you know, 0.4 acres and it'll hold a home that's going to be 4,000 square feet. And it is going to be for this type of client. It's going to have an awesome back deck opportunity to overlook the golf course or to be, you know, it's going to be close to the front. Whatever the, the, the case is, these, these communities are all very different. But find a property that you fall in love with and focus on it. And when you focus on it and you learn to get your energy up about that property, I promise you, you are going to transfer that energy to a prospective client. But if you are diffused and diluted by all of these different properties, by all the different offerings, and you're just, you know, out here with 10 different things, it's going to be harder to transfer that emotion, that energy to a prospective client and to be able to actually sell them the property. And so, again, what I'm not saying is don't familiarize yourself with the inventory. I'm saying find a specific piece on the inventory that you are jazzed about, energetic about, and you can create a storyline to, and then begin to go tell everybody about it. Because what's going to happen is these properties are going to be gone. I was talking with one of the managers the other day, and they said, you know, we only have X number of properties left that back up to this certain area. Well, guess what? Once they're gone, they're gone. So get excited about what you do have instead of focusing on what you don't or what's not happening and learn the power of focus so that you guys can, can actually get really nitty gritty on protecting your schedules and doing the things that you need to do, which is sell property. So hopefully today this provides a little bit of guidance, kind of a play on words, uh, some ideas for you guys to go be more excellent 
uh, at what you do and to get uh, jazzed up about being focused. Because I'm telling you, we are in, there's a lot of energy, guys. There's a lot of energy and there's a lot of resources. And uh, I'm, folks are going to be just pumped to get into these communities. So y'all have a, an incredible opportunity ahead and uh, get ready because I do believe that it's coming and the opportunity is great. So that wraps it up for today. Thank you guys. Um, as always, if you need anything, you can reach out to me, Matt at uprint.life or my cell is 910-619-4644. Thank you guys.